If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. My wife, Carol Joy, and I, we were on our way to church on a Wednesday night for Bible study. This was in February 2009. And I had just lost my line of credit at the bank that I shared with you in episode number one. And so I had put my private lending program together and I'd put my list together that I talked about. And so there was a gentleman that was on my list of potential private lenders that I wanted to talk to. I had known him for many, many years. We'd gone to church together for many years. And so I planned to reach out to him uh, at Bible study on this Wednesday evening. And here's exactly what happened, what I said and how it unfolded. We walked into the church building and uh, got into the foyer and I saw uh, my friend. His name is Wayne. So I walked up to Wayne and, uh, you know, I said, good evening. And I said, Wayne, I've got something that I want to confidentially talk with you about when we finish Bible study tonight. Would you have a few minutes to visit with me? He said, well, sure, Brother Jay. So uh, we sat down, we had Bible study, you know, sang a few songs and, and that went on for about an hour and we finished. Well, when Bible study was over, I looked up and Wayne, he and his wife sat on the other side of the auditorium in the church building. Well, Brother Wayne was, uh, he was an older gentleman. He was doing sort of a fast trot to the back of the church building, coming over to me. And I figured out pretty quickly, well, you know, Wayne, this whole time has been wondering for the past hour, what is it that Jay wants to talk to him about that's so confidential, right? So Wayne comes up to me, he says, well, now, Jay, what have you got in mind? And I said, well, Wayne, let's do this. Let's go down to the nursery and shut the door and, uh, and have a, a closed door conversation for a moment. So Wayne followed me down to the nursery. We closed the door and here's exactly what I said to Wayne, who I was hoping would be my very first private lender. I said to Wayne the following, I said, Wayne, you know, everybody in this town here in Moorhead city. You have put a television in everybody's home, and he had. Wayne was the original Zenith television dealer here in Moorhead City, and that's dating Wayne right there because that was prior to Walmart coming to town, right? So Wayne had sold hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of televisions. He would put a television in every room in Carteret General Hospital. He knew everybody in town because of that business. In addition to that, he was so involved in the Rotary Club for so many years. So I said to Wayne, I said, Wayne, you know everybody in this town. You put a television in everybody's house. You're very, very involved in the Rotary Club. You're so connected to our community. I need your help. Wow. Now that right there is a writer downer. That phrase, I said to Wayne, I said, Wayne, I need your help. And you know why that's such a powerful phrase? Because I believe God created us with it already inside us and in our heart. And that is we're created wanting to help other people. So I said to Wayne, I need your help. I have now opened up my real estate investing business by referral only to people that I know and trust. And I've got some kind of relationship with. And I'm now paying insane high rates of return to people that want to come and do business with me. But um, these high rates of return, they depend on the deal that I do. And so Wayne, here's how I need your help. And that is when you run across someone that is um, complaining about the low interest that they're getting in the local certificates of deposit at the bank, or you run across someone that's complaining about, you know, the volatility of the stock market, would you refer them to me? And I will tell them about my uh, program that I have that's paying high rates of return. And so Wayne uh, looked at me and he says, well, now Jay, what have you got in mind? 
And I said, well, do you mean what kind of interest rate that I do I have in mind? And he says, yeah. And I said, well, it really depends on the deal. But then I looked at Wayne and I said, Wayne, are you saying that you and your wife might be interested in doing this? He says, well, we might be. He says right now, now this was back in 2009. He said, you know, we're only getting about 3% in the local uh, certificate of deposit and the stock market is so volatile. It's just making us lose sleep at night. And, um, and I, and then he asked me again, he said, Jay, what have you got in mind as far as interest rate goes? And I repeated myself. I said, well, Wayne, again, it depends on the type of deal. And then I said, Wayne, what sounds high to you? He says, well, we're getting about 3% in a CD. I guess a high rate of return would be like 5% or 6%. And I said to Wayne, well, Wayne, I can't pay you 5 or 6%, but I can pay you 8%. And then Wayne looked at me and he says, put me down for $250,000. It was that easy and that quick. Now, the next day I actually did go to Wayne and, and his wife's home. And I went over the details of my private lending program and how they're protected and how they can get their money back in, you know, less than 90 days. If they've got some kind of emergency come up, taught them the interest rate and all that. Well, I tell you what, another lesson that I learned very, very quickly uh, with, that, with Wayne being my first private lender, I learned private lenders always have more money than they tell you, right? And so Wayne became my very, very first private lender. Now, in that story, you will want to take note that, of course, there's a five letter word that begins with T that played a big part of that happening. And that's called trust, right? Wayne and I, we had known each other for a number of years. I mean, you're not going to trust anybody any more than if you go to church with them, right? So we've been going to church together for a number of years. Well, I didn't know what I had done at the time, but I figured it out as time went on. What I had done in my conversation with Wayne in attracting that private money was I used what I now call the indirect method. So the name of this uh, episode is how I raised $250,000 from my very first private lender. Well, what goes along with that is now, what is it that you say to potential private lenders and where do you find private lenders? Well, I used what was called the indirect method. You see, I did not ask Wayne directly what I now call the magic question. Well, what is the magic question? The magic question is the following. Do you have investment capital or retirement funds not giving you a high rate of return safely and securely? That's a question that you want to memorize and have it come out of your mouth just as easily as it just did for me. The magic question, and this is called the direct method. This is the direct method. The magic question is, do you have investment capital or retirement funds not giving you a high rate of return safely and securely? Well, you see, I didn't ask that question directly to Wayne. Instead, I used the indirect method, and that is I asked for his help. I asked for him to help me spread the word to his friends and his connections about my private lending program. Well, guess what? He had investment capital uh, that was not you know, giving him a high rate of return, uh, and he wanted to get higher rates of return. So Therefore, by me asking for his help and him having investment capital himself, he became my first private lender. Do you see how easy that is? You're using the indirect method. You're just asking somebody to help you. So I'm going to talk more in a moment about what exactly to say to potential private lenders that you have some kind of connection with. But before I go over more scripting with you in this episode, I want to go ahead and identify with you where it is you find private lenders. Now, remember, I went over this in detail in the last episode, episode number one, but remember a private lender is not an institution. It's not a brokerage. A private lender is an individual, a human being, just like you that loans you money for your real estate deals, either from their investment capital and or their retirement funds. Okay. So there are three primary categories as to where you find private lenders. 
The first category is what I call your warm market. The second category of private lenders is what I call your expanded warm market. And the third category of private lenders are existing private lenders. These are individuals that are already loaning money out to real estate investors, uh, and they are loaning the money out and it's secured by the real estate. So let's unpack these three categories for a moment and talk about them in detail. Number one, the warm market. What do I mean by the warm market? Well, your warm market are people that have, you've got some kind of connection with them. So where do you find people in your warm market? Well, they're either in your cell phone or they're on your email list, or they are part of your social network, uh, you know, Facebook, Instagram, et cetera, LinkedIn. Um, they are people that you have some kind of social connection with, uh, people that you go to church with, people that are, you may be in a civic group with. So that is your warm market, right? Now in episode number one, I went over the five steps as to how you reach out to your warm market, right? Now, step number two, not step number two, but the second category of where you find private lenders are what I call your expanded warm market. You know, I have students uh, say to me uh, all the time, Jay, my warm market is broke. My people ain't got no money. Well, first of all, I don't believe them. But secondly, I think the real reason people think that, that their people are broke, is because the people they do know that has money, they may be intimidated in, in approaching them and don't know exactly what to say. And I'm going to get into exactly what to say here in just a moment. So what's your expanded more market? Well, your expanded more market is how you can grow your network, grow your network, grow your connections, right? So let me give you some, some specific suggestions as to how I have grown my uh, warm market, have expanded my warm market, grown my network, and I've attracted even more private money into my world. First of all, is an organization called BNI, which stands for Business Networking International. I have raised and attracted a lot of private money from being a part and very involved in BNI. The way BNI works, in contrast to like a civic group, BNI is for the purpose you become a member in your local chapter. You, uh, the purpose of becoming a member of the group is actually to give leads to your fellow members of where they can get more business. So in BNI, Business Networking International, they actually only have one person per, per category. They only have one real estate agent, one realtor, one real estate attorney, one mortgage broker, one plumber, one electrician, one general contractor, one financial planner, and on and on, one chiropractor, and et cetera, et cetera. So when you join BNI, like I have, and you just fill the seat of the real estate investor, I can almost guarantee you that in your local BNI, there is not another real estate investor that is holding that seat in the group. So you'll be sure and want to check out BNI, Business Networking International, in your local area, join that group, and you will attract a lot of private money by establishing new relationships with those people. You see, I'm talking about how you expand your warm market. Go get involved in BNI and your warm market will expand very, very quickly. Well, where else can you expand your warm market and your connections? How about the Rotary Club? The Rotary Club is an example of a civic group. And I was raised in the Rotary Club. My granddaddy was very, very involved in the Rotary Club. Now, the Rotary Club is very different from Business Networking International. The Rotary Club is a civic group and their purpose is to serve the local community and also to serve actually the world. Um, you know, for years, the Rotary Club, Rotary Club International had the goal of eradicating polio and you might as well say they have. So it's all about serving. Uh, in fact, the Rotary Club's motto is service above self. And so you get involved in the Rotary Club. Talk about expanding your connections and your network and being able to now do business with even more private lenders because now they're in your warm market. Uh, it all comes down to, as I covered in episode number one, 
It all comes down to having your teacher hat on and teaching other people what private money is, what self-directed IRAs are, and attracting money from them. And so, of course, another example of expanding your warm market and your network is getting involved in your local chamber of commerce. Wow, talk about expanding your network overnight. I mean, even in our local area here in Eastern North Carolina, in Moorhead City, North Carolina, the Chamber of Commerce has got hundreds of members. What a great way to expand your market. Now, remember, when you get involved in these organizations, it's all about leading with service, going there to see what you can volunteer to do. So this strategy is a long play. This is a long play on getting private money. You're not going to be attracting private money overnight uh, doing this strategy because you've got to first establish the relationship with these people to where they come to know you, like you, and trust you. So the first category is connections you already have. Secondly is your expanded warm market that I just talked about, growing your network. And then the third category is what I call existing private lenders. These are individuals that are already loaning money out to real estate investors that they know what private money is, right? So the question is, how do you find existing private lenders? Well, let me tell you how I started out. When I started out looking for existing private lenders in my local area, I hired my real estate attorney's paralegal to search public records uh, at the courthouse. And I asked her to search for uh, records of individuals that were loaning money out to other uh, individuals or LLCs secured by real estate. Here in North Carolina, we don't have mortgages. We have what's called a deed of trust. It's the same thing. A deed of trust and a mortgage are the documents and instruments that collateralize the promissory note that gives the lender the legal right to foreclose in case the borrower does not pay the note. So I had the paralegal search public records for individuals loaning money out on real estate. Well, guess what? In 90 days, she only found two people. I'm going, man, there's got to be a faster way to do that. So I hired some software developers and developed what is now called my private lender data feed. We update the private lender data feed every month. There's over 12,000 private lender loans that are closed every month in the nation. And we get all their contact information, the interest rates that they're getting on the notes and the amount of money that they're loaning out. So that private lender data feed has just saved us so much time. Now in a moment, I'm going to give you a free gift just for thanking you for showing up here into this episode. I'm going to give you my free money guide, private money guide that I just finished writing. I'm so excited about it. And the private lender data feed, when you download this money guide, it'll give you details about that as well. Now, a third area to find or a third place to find existing private lenders are the following. And boy, here's a big secret. And that is to attend self-directed IRA company networking events. So first of all, before we talk about that, let me define what a self-directed IRA is. A self-directed IRA company is also known as a third party custodian. Okay. And what a self-directed IRA company is, is it is approved by uh, the IRS to where people like you can transfer existing retirement funds over to the self-directed IRA company. So the retirement funds can be coming from a 401k. They can be coming from a pension, um, an existing employer's 401k, you know, a previous employer's 401k, any kind of IRS approved retirement fund. Well, the reason it's so important for you to learn and network and become acquainted and establish a relationship with a self-directed IRA company, here's why. You see, I now have 44 private lenders, individuals that are loaning money on my real estate deals and over half of them, over 50% of them are using their retirement funds to loan to me on my real estate deals. Well, guess what? None of them, none of my private lenders that are using their retirement funds had ever heard of self-directed IRA companies. Well, let me tell you, the reason it's so important is that 
Once I found out they had retirement funds and they wanted to get higher rates of return safely and securely using their existing retirement funds, well, I introduced them to my self-directed IRA company that I have a relationship with. If I didn't have that relationship with the self-directed IRA company, I would be missing out on over half of the private money I've got. Right now, I've got about eight and a half million dollars in private money that I use on project to project to project. Well, I'd be missing out on over $4 million of that private money if I didn't have a relationship established with a self-directed IRA company that I can introduce my new private lenders to that have retirement funds. Well, I know you may be asking, well, Jay, which self-directed IRA company do you refer your new private lenders to? Well, I have done business with more than one self-directed IRA company, and I can tell you hands down the best self-directed IRA company on the planet is questtrust.com. They're based out of Houston, Texas, and they're located on the internet at www.questtrust.com. That's Q U E S T. T R U S T dot com. I get my deals funded within three business days. That's right. I get my real estate deals funded within three business days when I have one of my private lenders that's using their retirement funds to fund my deal. So you see, when your private lender, and of course, this is coming from your warm market, when your private lender is moving their funds over to the self-directed IRA company, questtrust.com. They can now truly self-direct those funds to you and your company to get high rates of return safely and securely. So back to existing private lenders. Did you know that 70% of account holders at self-directed IRA companies are wanting to loan money from their retirement accounts to real estate investors like you? So my suggestion was go and attend self-directed IRA company networking events. In fact, Quest Trust has got one from the date of this recording, has got a big networking event coming up, and there's going to be a thousand people there. Can you imagine networking with 700 people that are wanting to loan you money? So again, to recap, the three categories are the warm market, your expanded warm market and existing private lenders that are already loaning money out. So I promised you at the beginning of this episode, I would also cover with you exactly what to say to private lenders. Well, what I'm going to share with you right now is some suggestions on what to say exactly to a new potential private lender that is in your warm market. Now, at the very beginning of this episode, I told you the story of exactly what I said to Wayne, my very first private lender that loaned me $250,000. That's the indirect method. Now, let me share with you what I call the direct method and some scripting that I'll share with you right now as to what you could say to a new potential private lender in your warm market. And it goes like this. And I'm, I'm doing a little role play with you right now. Let's say that you are one of my, somebody in my warm market I've got a relationship with. And now I'm talking with you about becoming a private lender for me. And here's what I might say to you in our conversation. It could take place over the phone. It could take place in person. And I would say, as you may know, I am investing in real estate here in the local area. And I'm now positioning my company to take advantage of the tidal wave of foreclosures that are now opening up on this side of COVID. I've now opened up my real estate investing business to people that I know and trust, and I'm paying insane high rates of return. But unless you answer yes to the following question, there's no need for me to give you any information about my program. And that question is, do you have investment capital or retirement funds not paying you a high rate of return safely and securely? Now, that question that I just asked is, again, what I call the magic question. Let me repeat that again because it's a writer downer. And the question is, do you have investment capital or retirement funds not paying you a high rate of return safely and securely? And then I shut up. I let them answer the question. If they say no, I know they're broke. 
because at the local certificate or deposit at the local bank, the average uh, rate of return is a quarter of a percent. So when I come along and offer 8%, I know that's going to be a very, very high rate of return for them. But when they answer yes to that question, yes, I do have investment capital uh, or retirement funds that's not paying me a high rate of return. If they say yes, then I go to step number three, which I taught you in episode number one of raising private money. Uh, I then give them my 16 minute audio called stress-free investing. So that's one thing. That's a little bit of scripting that you could be saying to someone. Now, in addition to that, and I'm going to wrap up this episode with this big tip, and then I'm going to give you my private money guide for free that you can download right now. So here's the big tip. How in the world do you start a conversation with a potential private lender in your warm market? Well, here's how you start the conversation. And I love it. These are my favorite three words to start a conversation. And here are the three words. Did you know? Did you know? I mean, when you say to someone, did you know? You've already got their, you've already got their attention. So here's the exact question. And you'll want to write this down. This is a beautiful question to open up a conversation about private money, what private money is, and talking with someone in your warm market that could lead to them becoming a private lender for you in your real estate business. And here's my favorite, did you know question? And here it is. Did you know there's a way people can earn unlimited money tax free? That's the question. Let me repeat it. Did you know there's a way people can earn money, unlimited money, tax-free? So what in the world? I mean, of course, they're going to answer no. <laughs> Nobody knows how people can earn unlimited money tax-free. Well, here's how they can, and here's the answer. This is leading into a conversation about self-directed IRAs. You see, when a person moves their retirement funds over to a self-directed IRA company like Quest Trust, then if their retirement funds are, are in the form of a Roth IRA, well, a Roth IRA is built on after-tax funds, which means they can invest that money from their Roth IRA in Quest Trust into your real estate deal. And again, they're not owning any part of your deal. You own the property, your LLC, your land trust. They are acting in the same capacity as a bank. The private lender is the lender. They don't own any of the property. So depending on the type of retirement account they have, they can earn unlimited money tax-free. And guess what? Even if their retirement funds are not a Roth IRA, guess what? Even if it's a, just a traditional IRA or a 401k, their money that they make off of you that you're paying back to them is tax deferred. They're not going to be paying any taxes on that money until they take distributions. So there you have it, what to say, where they're located. And as I promised, I want to give you right now, absolutely for free. I'm so excited about it. My brand new private money guide. I just finished writing it. It's called seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate business and help you build incredible wealth. You can download this my money guide right now at www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. Again, that's www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide. This will get you on the fast track. If you've been trying to figure out how to get funding for your deals, if you are tired of missing out on deals or you're still trying to get your first deal and you just didn't know where you were going to get the money. The private money guide is for you. It'll get you on the fast track to getting all the private money that you would ever want. I'm so excited that you uh, decided to join me right on to the end of this episode. And I can't wait to see you here on the next upcoming episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you all the best. And here's to you having a very, very successful future by getting all the private money you'll ever want. We'll see you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money. 
Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Connor.